But those old stereotypes are all head stuff. It doesn't have very much to do with the heart. It's all in our heads. And quite frankly, the church is a head institution. This idea that we have right here is kind of a head idea, isn't it? You sit there and the talking head is up here with the microphone and I talk and you listen and it goes into your head and I hope some of it goes into your heart and I hope I'm speaking sometimes from the heart even though everything's written down. It's only written down because I have absolutely no memory. And you want to be under control, which is what the church teaches, doesn't it? We want to be under control. That's why we have creeds. This is what we believe. And I know that if we ever read creeds in church or something like that, some of you are saying, well, I don't believe that. That can't, that can't be true. I don't believe that. Or how could that ever happen? But when the creeds were written uh, 15 to 1600 years ago, it was to bring control. We don't want you thinking just any old thing or believing any old thing. You've got to conform here. And it's a very narrow way to conform. And that way may have worked and it may have even been a good thing early on in the church's life. But I would tell you from what I see in the church nowadays and what I read by the scholars who are really working on this issue, that way is gone. It's gone among conservatives. To some extent, young conservatives are saying, are leaving the church because they say the church doesn't look like Jesus. These big evangelical churches, these mega churches are finding out from their own youth that the church doesn't look like Jesus. And that's on my mind all the time. Do we look like Jesus here? Are we doing the things that Jesus would do? Would Jesus walk around cuddling one of these rats and say, do you know what this little rat can do, big rat can do? It's not control that we're after. It's love. Love is the whole thing, just you and God. And when you are with just God, when you are in the quiet of your own room, in the place where you pray or where you meditate, who are you then? Are you different in that place than you are here in the group? Or where you work? Or where you go to socialize? Or are you the same person when you sit down and you think it's just you and God? And integrating those two parts of what, how we live our lives is absolutely crucial to be a spiritual person. And we learn it all our whole life. It never gets finished. But we're on the way. And do you ask the question, no matter how old you are, this is not a beginning of life question. It's a continuing question. Where do I want to go in my life? And who do I want to go with me? Those questions actually should be spoken in the Lord's Supper liturgy. When you come forward, where are you going in your life? And who do you want to go with you? And we receive in the liturgy what is called the body and blood of Christ. And what that means to me is that we take all of Christ Emotional and head stuff, we take all of that into us. And when we integrate those two things, there is a blessing. Sometimes we can't even understand it, but there is a blessing. Every time I see you walk by me or walk by our deacon who's serving today, and I look at you, I wonder what's going to happen between you and God at this moment when you come forward. Amen. It's our custom in Communion Sundays to stand and greet your neighbor with the shaking of a hand and wishing them the peace of Christ.